Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing After the Virus. This is a small box deck building game, and it's designed by Jacob Frixelius, the same designer as Terraforming Mars. So let's have a look at how it plays, and then I'll give you some final thoughts. So After the Virus is a deck building game in which you are trying to survive and complete challenges during the zombie apocalypse. So it is a zombie themed deck builder. So to play After the Virus, you choose one of the four characters, each of whom is going to have a different starting deck. So that's all going to be detailed there on the character sheet. Any cards that don't go into your starting deck go here. So that becomes an area deck that you can scout for more cards. And then you have a special pile of zombies. And they start out pretty easy, just one zombie. But then you get two, three, and four. So the more zombie cards that you're forced to draw, the harder it gets because not only are there more zombie cards in your deck, but there are potentially more zombies on each card. So how do zombies end up in your deck in the first place? Well, this is a very interesting deck builder because basically you'll have your starting deck and because we're on wave one and we're playing single player, you shuffle in more zombies if you're playing cooperatively, you have to shuffle a zombie into your deck as well. Then every single time that you're required to draw more cards because you've discarded everything, you have to go up a wave and shuffle that many zombies into your hand. So in second wave, I'll shuffle in two zombies. Third wave, I'll shuffle in three. One of the interesting consequences of this is that if you draw too many zombies, you have to deal with them on the turn that they come out or else they're going to injure you. So if you draw too many zombies at once, that means that you are probably dead. So you need to dilute your deck by putting more cards in it, which is sort of counterintuitive because in most deck builders, you want a tighter, smaller deck, not a fatter one. What makes this even more challenging is that you may not want to draw a whole bunch of zombies in a row. You don't want a whole deck full of zombies, but you're going to have to thin your deck at the same time because you have to put cards into play in order to actually deploy them against the zombies that you're so concerned about. So if we take a starting hand of five, so we didn't get a zombie in this one, so we'll play out two hands. Basically what you would do is you choose which of your cards you want to put into play and or prepare, and you choose which of your cards you want to discard. And your choices are going to change depending on which mission in the game you choose to play. There are 15 different ones, and some of them get really challenging. For example, if I want to have weapon skill, it starts in play because my character has that, but you have to pay two cards to prepare it and make it start to work. So I could say that I want to discard a survivor in a safe house, so these go in your discard pile, to prepare this card. But because you have to prepare everything that you play, it can get a little tough. If I want a weapon, I can put it out into play, but in order to prepare it, I have to put ammunition on it. And I can basically choose to put another survivor on here, so it's no longer survivor, it's ammo, in order to put this card into play and allow me to shoot my pistol. Then if I want to, I can put the scout up, but this one costs zero, so it's prepared. So now I'm prepared for some zombies, but I have a lot of cards that are out because my starting deck had like 10 cards in it and four of them are sitting in play. So the more zombies I have to put in my hand, the more likely it is I'm going to keep drawing them and it's going to cause problems down the line. It's one of the fun tensions in the game. So if you pick up our next hand, there is a zombie in it and he's out and we're actually going to have a choice. So I have these three run cards so I can show you the two different things you can choose to do with zombies. So you have a choice when you have a zombie. I can choose to run, but it puts the zombie back in my discard pile, which means it's not gone, it just comes back. So that can be something that if you have cards that allow you to remove zombies from your discard pile is a great idea. Otherwise you're just sort of borrowing from your future and basically putting off trouble until later. So I could choose to run. Or I could choose to do something like take this pistol, pay the ammo, which goes in your discard pile, and shoot the zombie to death, which would also be a legitimate move. So there's multiple ways to deal with the zombies. Or if you really can't do anything, you can choose to let the zombie attack you. And what that means is that zombies will die in close combat, but if you don't do anything about them with your cards and they attack you at the end of a round, then you have to take a wound. And you choose where you take it, but if you get one in the brain, you're dead, which means you can take three injuries max before you're done. And with whole hordes of zombies coming into your deck, three ain't much. So if you take an injury in your leg, you can no longer play a run card. If you take an injury in your arm, you can only prepare one weapon and no longer two. If you take an injury in your brain, well, you're zombie meat and you're done. 
So gameplay is relatively simple, but you're going to have a different mission each time you play, which means that the way that you choose to prioritize and play your cards is going to subtly change as you go, which is actually really, really enjoyable. Sometimes your priority is just going to be killing zombies, sometimes it's having certain cards in play, and sometimes it's actually rescuing survivors, which you can do by preparing survivors and then playing this safe house. So the game, even though it's a small box game with not very many cards, I mean this is really your whole deck of cards that you'll see in the game, you still get a lot of variety and excitement with relatively little in terms of actual gaming materials. So that's something that I find impressive because it's really tense to try to draw your hand and hope that there's not a whole bunch of zombies in it or to be truly torn about how you want to play one of your cards. So I'll start by saying I was surprised by how much I liked After the Virus. I really was not into the art style. I, don't, I still don't think that it's very aesthetically pleasing, but I'm really glad that I saw past that and gave the game a try because it has brought me many hours of entertainment. And that's really impressive for a game that I paid $17 for on Amazon. So I think the thing that I like the most about it is I love the card economy that it creates where you're trying to make your deck thicker, but you're also trying to have enough cards that are out of your deck and prepared so you can deal with the zombies that are in there too. And all of the tension in how to play your cards and how best to deploy them and when to do it is really exciting and interesting. And it's something that I think will have me pulling this game out for maybe years to come when I want to do a game that's quick set up and fun on a work night. I also love deck builders in general and I really like this twist on the mechanic because usually in a deck builder you're trying to cull but in this game you know you're trying to find good things to put in your deck that are worth having in there so you can either be paying cards to prepare other cards or you're having good new tools in your arsenal to deal with all of the zombies. I also like that there are four characters who actually do feel different even though they're basically working with the same decks of cards. Just having a different starting hand suggests different play styles that actually bring a lot of variety to a game that doesn't have enough of it. So that's actually where I'm going to talk about my first con for the game, which is that After the Virus doesn't have that many cards in it, so only up to three people can play at a time, and each deck is actually just the same set of cards. So everybody gets their own set of zombies, everybody gets their own set of cards. If you play a different character, you get different starting cards, but all of the same cards are there between your hand and the area deck. So it doesn't take very long to have seen everything and to already know what your favorites are and to look for them. And strategically, that can be kind of cool because it lets you plan, but you know, it also gets a little bit tired. So you know, you're, it's not gonna be long before you pretty much know what all of your options are and you know what's in the deck. And if you want a little bit more variety, then we would need an expansion, which I have no idea if that's coming or not. The other thing that makes After the Virus a little bit frustrating, and I'm okay with this because the game plays so quickly once you know what you're doing, I don't love that because so many zombies are coming into your hand, it's entirely possible if you get a bad shuffle to pull an entire hand of zombies and just lose the game immediately. Because you can only take three injuries, so if you draw five zombies and you don't have any cards to help you and you had a bunch of zombies last turn, you'll die. And I mean, that's part of the fun, right? You're, you're, we're in a crazy zombie apocalypse. But it also makes me a little bit crazy that as of the maybe third or fourth round of the game, you can basically get insta-killed depending on how you shuffle your deck. So if that's something that bothers you, then I would think twice about this one. That said, I really like After the Virus. Uh, I like it so much more than I thought I was gonna like it. I find myself wanting to pull it out when I just have a few minutes because it's so easy to set up. Uh, I find myself really trying the more difficult scenarios multiple times because I just have to figure out how to beat them. and. I think that that's a great quality of the game. So even though it's a small box game that maybe could use a little bit more variety, what's in the box is an amazingly good value. And for that reason, I'm giving After the Virus an eight out of 10. Happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.